All right, guys, I'm so excited about this video because it's been on my list for almost a year to make it. I've been researching DMARC and trying to figure out what it really means. And I always knew it was important, but I didn't really understand how nice it would be to get reports and to know where email is being sent from and to be able to block that so people can't spoof my domain. Basically, DMARC is a reporting policy that ties in SBF and DKIM records. Now, I know that's a lot of acronyms. We're going to go through it. and We have other videos that help explain all of it. But in this video, we're going to go through what a DMARC record is, what reports look like, and how it will help ensure your email is more secure than ever. So let's go ahead and dive in. As we jump in, I do want to remind you guys we are consultants. So if you ever do get stuck with something you see in this video or others, feel free to reach out to us at support at nexttechconsultants.com. You can find us on all social media platforms, including Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Our handle at all of them is at nexttechnt. Thank you so much for supporting our channel by liking and subscribing so we can continue to make content like this to help secure your business and grow. Now enough of that, let's get started. First off, let's start with what does DMARC stand for? It is an abbreviation for Domain Based Message Authentication Reporting in Conformance. I'll try to say that five times fast. Um, but instead of doing that, I'm just gonna call it DMARC, like everybody else. So now that we know the full name, let's talk about what a DMARC record is and what it does. If you haven't seen our SBF and DKIM record videos, those will be really helpful and you can find them in the description below because DMARC ties together those two things in the reports on your domain. Also a huge shout out to DMarcian. As we go through this video, I help use some of their content on their website to help give you visuals. I also use them for DMARC reporting. This isn't a sponsored video. They aren't paying me at all for this, but I wanted to shout them out because they are a really good product. And it seems like even with their customer support, they were just really helping out. So super excited about their platform. And if you ever have more questions on DMARC or want a DMARC reporting platform, reach out to them. And I'll put a link in the description below also. All right, so unlike SBF in DKIM records, DMARC actually checks three different things. So the first thing it checks, you can see here on the screen, it checks number one, which is the from email address. It checks on that domain and says, okay, this is where it's coming from. Now we're gonna check number two, which is what the SPF records check. And that just checks and says, hey, is the return path a valid place to return my email to if I were to send from here? And the third thing it checks is your DKIM record. So you can see here, it's looking at the domain to make sure it matches in that it's a valid signed email. So all of your records come together and that's what DMARC is checking. So this is an example of something that passes. Now, an example of something that fails, and this is like a perfect spoofed email. What this means is they're sending it and they want it to look like it's coming from you but really they're sending it from a different domain. And so what DMARC is gonna do is say, hey, while the SPF record might've worked because the return path is a valid place for EUA, EU daemon.net, and so is the DKIM, but DMARC comes in and says, hey, wait, no, the from address is wrong, so now this fails. And so that's what DMARC is doing. It's checking these records and what you have set up in your DNS to make sure that all of this works together and your email passes. Okay, so now that we know what DMARC is doing on the back end to say if your email passes or fails, let's go through a DMARC text entry in your DNS and what that's also doing, because it's also important that text entry will go through a few different things to say, hey, I'm at, where am I sending reports to? What is my policy? And so we're gonna go through each of those steps in this DMARC record and explain what they do. So it starts off with version. The first thing is version, which is just DMARC one, because that's the version that we're on with DMARC. So your text records are gonna have V equals DMARC one. The next is your policy. And so your policy, really you have none or reject. And in there, what none does is say, hey, I, and I would suggest that when you start, start with none because you can then monitor your domain, make sure everything is right, and then start rejecting. Because the worst thing you wanna do is send out an email blast, and that whole email blast gets rejected because you forgot to accept it in your DMARC record. So monitor for at least 30 days, 
as policy none and then put it into reject. The goal is to get to reject so nobody can keep spoofing your email address. So next you have RUA, which RUA is your reporting email address for aggregate data. So this is just the data that when somebody checks into your DMARC, it says, who am I going to send an email to? That's just normal data. It's all of the different XML. It's gets complicated, but basically it's saying, hey, this is where I'm going to send aggregate data. And this is required. You have to have an RUA. You also have to have a policy in your version. Now, the next one is our first optional one, and this is the email address for forensic data, and it's called RUF. They can be the same email address, but the important part about that is you want to make sure that your forensic data can have sensitive data in it. So if you're going to be sending and saying, hey, I want this RUF report to go to an email, make sure it's a secure email because it can have sensitive data in it. The next part is ADKIM. So really the only time you should be using this is if you're going to be setting it to S, which is strict. And what strict does is it says that, hey, we're going to say you cannot use a subdomain to validate your DKIM record. So really, you, if you're sending from a subdomain, you probably shouldn't use this and it gets a little bit complicated. So I would, I would probably recommend just leaving this one blank. This also goes the same for ASPF, which is your SPF policy. It's the same type, it's optional, and you have relaxed and strict. And strict, all the, all the strict does in both of these is deal with can you send from a subdomain or not? So if, you, if you're not really sure, leave it blank. If you wanna get into more detail about that, ask in the comments below, I'm happy to answer questions. All right, now I made hints at this other part a little bit throughout the video, but the goal of your DKIM record is to get to reject. Now, as I mentioned, you do probably want to spend 30 days or more in a none policy framework. And what that's going to do is allow you to monitor and set up all the proper DKIM and SPF records, make sure your email's flowing properly, and then we move into a reject record. The benefit of getting to reject, just like I mentioned in that example when it was showing you, hey, all these passed and this one didn't, is it removes the ability to spoof your email address because you can change headers in an email and send it as if you're someone else. So I could send something that says, hey, I'm josiah at youtube.com and then i send it to my employee and some employees at youtube and say hey i want to get some information about other people and and try to steal some data obviously it's worded better but then that employee says oh it's from youtube.com so i can send this information that's not always true if you don't have your policy set up properly so we know that the goal is to set it to reject we also know now what a dmark record does and it's checked every time a server receives an email address, it goes out, checks those three things based on the DMARC entry that's in your DNS. We know that our DNS record is a text entry with a name of underscore DMARC and a value is the stuff that we went over, whether it's your policy, your RUA, and um, what version you're doing. So those are kind of the general overview. What I want to do now is I'm going to hop back over to the computer. I'm going to show you guys a little bit about what Demarcian looks like in some, some of the graphs and really just easy things that allow you to view your DMARC and see what's happening. All right, guys. So this is the dashboard for Demarcian, and I love it. You can quickly see like, hey, these are all your DMARC capable records. A forwarded, it, basically what a forwarded is, is like, hey, I got an email. I'm going to forward it to someone through a rule or a policy and it forwards the email out. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean much here. You can kind of ignore the forwarded one. It's just good information, but just kind of ignore those. Um, and then the threat or unknown, this is where it gets, it's interesting because a threat or unknown means it could just be an unknown source. And so D Marcian has gone through and found out a bunch of sources that are helpful like this, Microsoft 365, Mail Channel, SendGrid, and so that's the source data. So if they don't know where it's coming from, which in the case, uh, I had a bunch of th unknown earlier because of an IPv6 address, which isn't a big deal. It's just, hey, it looks like it came from Microsoft, but we didn't know that address, so we're good to go. Um, so this is just where you kind of watch it and you look at it. Now, if we scroll down, what's really nice here, you can see like, hey, we have our policy, our DMARC record is in, we have our SPF record, it's in. You can even click on it, and check and see what it is. So if you click here, you can see, hey, look, here's our actual DMARC record. 
Um, and then you can go in and say, hey, look, it looks like DKIM is present. It is sending with it. It doesn't know if it's present until it starts reading email. So when you first add it, you'll know if your DMARC record's in, you'll know if your SPF record's in, and then it'll say unknown for DKIM record because it's trying to figure out if you have it with headers. So then finally, what you can do is you can click on emails. So you can go in, you can see here, I have 128 DMARC capable notifications. I have uh, no DMARC capable, non-DMARC capable There's none, which is great. Forward is 24, not a big deal. And I have no threat unknown, but you can click on source viewer and you go down you can say, hey, look, SendGrid sent this many. Uh, Microsoft 365 sent this and you can dial in really well with all of this. And so if you're starting to figure out where stuff comes in, it's a great platform and you never want to go through this raw data yourself. It's going to be a pain. So I would recommend using some platform to look at that. All right, guys, I know that was a ton of information, but DMARC was something I was super excited to go over. I want to make sure we hit almost everything. Like I might've missed a couple things, but I feel pretty confident in that overview. Um, I hope it helps you in some way and that you can get your records more secure. Again, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at support at nextdeckconsultants.com. And if you're still here, you should probably click that like or subscribe button because you've been around a while and we really appreciate it because it helps us create more content like this to support you and your business. So until I see you next time, thanks for watching and have a great time. Domain-based message authentication reporting and conformance. Domain-based message authentication reporting and conformance. Domain-based uh, message. Domain-based message authentication reporting and conformance. Domain-based message authentication reporting and conformance. Domain-based message authentication reporting and conformance. Yes, five.